Hey, journalism is a very core part of the entire science writing. Added advantage is that we are giving them technical information also as to why this particular product is important and scientifically, how does it benefit you? Uh, you know, science-based uh, magazines are also there, which are core scientific. They have nothing to do with the business aspect of the industry work. So those kind of options are always there. If you have a flair for writing and reading, especially for science, there are multiple options available. Fortunately, my background uh, in terms of education helped me uh, understand the writing process in terms of what needs to be delivered to the industry needs we are dealing with. So that was an advantage, which uh, might not have been there if I had not done a PhD. All I have to do is probably post a LinkedIn updated story or an article, tag those 10 people. So they anyway would then recall, okay, yeah, you know, this person is uh, well connected in this aspect. Hello and a warm welcome to episode 7 of our podcast series, Crafting Your Writing Career, Parts and Possibilities, brought to you by the Learner Me team. I am Mahua, your host, and we are thrilled to have Dr. Manvina Chavla as our guest today. She is the executive editor at Biospectrum, a leading biotechnology magazine. Dr. Manvina chose to follow her passion for communication after completing a PhD in microbiology and extensive research at renowned institutions such as the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore, the International Centre for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology, and the National Institute of Immunology in Delhi. Since then, she has authored numerous articles and moderated multiple panel discussions focusing on the key challenges facing the biotech industry worldwide. In this episode, Dr. Manbina will share her valuable insights on building a successful career as a magazine editor, discussing her journey in the landscape of science journalism and the challenges of the field. We urge you to use this episode as a broad guide to understand the work required in the magazine creation space for writers. While we are speaking to an editor of a science magazine, the skills discussed will be relevant for writers in other types of magazines as well. Join us for an enlightening discussion with Dr. Manbina Chavla. Hi Manbina, thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you and for giving me this opportunity. It's a pleasure to have you on this discussion here. Thank you. Pleasure is all mine. Okay. So Manbina, um, I'll set the context before we start our uh, conversation today. We are uh, trying to explore various career options one can uh, start with uh, mm -hmm. if they are good in writing. Uh, right. So since you come from uh, Science Magazine and you are an editor there, so we wanted to understand what is the role of an editor and um, how somebody with good writing skills can come into this kind of a career path. So yeah, the key role of uh, an editor would be to uh, be aware of the uh, recent happenings of the industry. Let's say I'll take uh, the example at our end that ours is a biotech and science based magazine. So we need to understand what is actually happening at the biotech industry level and also what the government is thinking in that regard. Say, for example, a new policy has been launched for the medtech sector, which we often cover. So the editor needs to know exactly you know, what new policy has been launched, what is the government's perspective and whether the industry is satisfied with it or not. So those kind of things are, are very critical for the editor to read and understand. Then only new articles will be developed or new content will be generated. And it's equally important for the branding as well, because unless we are not able to cover what's actually happening and somebody else does it at, you know, at a competition level, so we need to set that tone right as well. So give a neutral perspective from all aspects. So that's very important for the editor to understand. Then only you know, the team will also move forward with it. In a way, you are responsible for branding mm -hmm. also. Uh, yes. As an editor. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, in you also mentioned about content generation. So does the editor decide the entire content planning in throughout the year? What kind of articles will be generated? Absolutely. 
the editor has the final say in a way because he or she should be most aware of the things at the industry level. And there are other team members also who might have specific interests or might be able to share better ideas. So teamwork is definitely required. So the editor should listen to the juniors or the other subordinates. And equally important is the marketing team. Or they also interact with so many people on a daily basis on the field. So they might also be able to contribute to better ideas as to which idea would kind of sell better than the other, which the editor might not not you know think at a particular level so i think it's the whole combination that is required but the final say is of the editor that's for sure you mentioned that uh, an editor needs to be aware of the policies that the government is coming mm. up with so uh, is the magazine in a way contributing to policy making or being a bridge between the government and the other industry partners or industry members who are operating in biotech uh, field uh, so at this level, our magazine is not really acting as a bridge or something that the government would actually turn around to. We are more connected with the industry. So we would be more interested in understanding their responses once a particular policy, for example, is launched. And we would want to listen to the industry, whether they are satisfied or dissatisfied or what's the reason. And then, you know, compile content based on that and try to reach it out to the government, see if changes can be done. Or maybe take part in events or forums where there are elaborate discussions happening, but mostly with respect to the industry. That's that's our core focus. What is the outcome that you're seeking through these discussions and all the different interviews or policies uh, that you are trying to understand? So as I said that we are most connected to the industry. So in case there are any gaps, any loopholes because of which the end product, what the industry is developing, let's say it's a diagnostic kit or a medical device, it's not reaching the end users or the hospitals on time and the patients are not benefiting from it, then what's the whole point of you know developing the product at the first place? So in case there are any gaps, that needs addressing and redressal. So that is what our core objective is, that that should be met time on time. So is it uh, similar to journalism in a way that uh, you are trying to uh, take the uh, arm janta, if I may say, <laughs> okay, arm janta's uh, voice to the industry uh, and then trying to uh, see what kind of uh, redressal and how do they address their concerns is that something that's happening at the same time absolutely journalism is a very core part of the entire science writing that we are doing mm -hmm. the added advantage is that we are giving them technical information also we missed at the other magazines they only focus on the end user but we are providing the end user with extra information as to why this particular product is important and scientifically how does it benefit you? So both elements are important. Okay. But um, how do you start your journey with a magazine? Uh, how do you proceed up to the editor role? So I think the start point for any person to get into this field would be to have at least a master's degree. And because we're talking about a science-based magazine it has to be master in science. But we do face a lot of uh, candidates who are just core masters in mass communication or journalism. And I think they can gradually pick up the subject knowledge. Uh, so that's the start point. And um, it's basically a growth journey if you're able to deliver good content, able to network better your popularity increases within the industry as well as within the uh, company or the organization that you're working into. You start as a journalist and you can move on to a sub-editor level or then an editor level. It takes time, uh, more or less, but it is doable and absolutely a fantastic journey it can prove out to be. So uh, now if somebody is um, planning um, to join any science magazine, uh, or any other magazine, what would be your advice? How should they prepare themselves? So I think first thing is to check with yourself whether you're really motivated enough to write and read also at the same time, because unless you don't read or write well, you will not be able to pass on the information that is required to be generated in that content. So check with yourself what is your interest. And uh, yes, getting into communication or magazine writing is something which is uh, definitely the first step to do and um, also in case the person wants to explore further you can always 
uh, move from you know one organization to the other because based on science there are different verticals also whether it's science business or whether it's core science uh, you know science based uh, magazines are also there which are core scientific they have nothing to do with the business aspect or the industry work so those kind of options are always there or it could be just core editing where there are you know a research journals they publish research papers. All you have to do is then translate it into a layman language. So there are multiple such avenues which can open up if you have a flair for writing and reading, especially for science. There are multiple options available. Okay. Anything else that comes to your mind that, that might help people who are wanting to come into this industry? I think now things are going very digital. And honestly speaking, it's just probably the elder generation who are still more inclined towards uh, magazines in general, their existence. But uh, the, the new people that are coming, if they are still entering into this field and uh, learning new things, uh, one needs to be more savvy with the technology. So because technology, like say, for example, artificial intelligence, or so many new things are coming, new content can be created. So in order to be, you know, there in the competition, uh, one should keep learning new techniques as well. Content creation is one important aspect, but how to deliver it in the quickest possible way or more interesting, more graphic, because people don't really need to see a lot of text these days. As I said, the older generation likes to read, but the newer ones are more graphic oriented. So learn the new technology so that you're able to deliver your articles or your write-ups as soon as possible in the best creative way possible. So I think that is something that one needs to now pick up. Digital is the new thing now. So are we speaking the likes of chat GPT and uh, generative AI content? <laughs> Well, I won't rely on that entirely. It has its own set of challenges. Again, you cannot uh, bypass the human factor here, but keep learning so that you can take advantage of these new technologies. Don't start depending on them okay. entirely. Okay. And also you mentioned um, a lot of graphics. So basically you should be able to present your content, not just write, but yes. add all the visual elements. So think visual transformation is something that you might want to practice if at all yes if it's doable one should incorporate that in whatever information one is creating uh, i think it has its advantage people would take in that more than the normal text-based uh, content so in your magazine other than text visual communication is happening so are you also into animation animated content so we're trying, we're trying to make changes on that, especially on the website. Of course, magazine, uh, there'll be limitations. We can't really incorporate much technology. It's just uh, the book form that is there. But to be able to make that content available on the website, so if somebody does not want to read the entire piece, maybe a translated version of a small video is available on the website. So that sort of options is something that uh, we are working on. Okay, so maybe something to look into of animation scripts or yes. maybe an interview script like uh, the conversation that we are having today. Right? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Something like that, yes. Okay. So these are the various formats of content that one can expect when they are coming into a digital kind of a print, yes. uh, digital kind of a magazine. Absolutely. One should keep up with the latest technologies. It's very, very necessary. Uh, other than writing, do you also need to uh, develop these uh, pieces, media pieces yourself or you have a visual team to work with? So unless it's very difficult where an IT expert is required, of course, we do have an IT team. I think otherwise it's doable mm -hmm. with the common activities that we do. We don't really have to have a sound knowledge of it. Everybody is aware of technology. We use mobile phones and all. So these things are quicker to learn, very easy. Unless there is a technical glitch which requires an expertise. Otherwise, it's doable. Okay, so uh, maybe softwares like uh, Microsoft Office and some other animation tools that are uh, readily available. Those kinds yes. of tools you are using? Yes, something on Windows like a movie maker or otherwise things are easily uploaded on YouTube. You just make a simple video from smartphones. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that way it's becoming quite convenient. Okay, that's nice to know. I think yes. network is something that you mentioned, right? Uh, yes. Especially if 
if there is something to do with business or uh, if there yes. is something to do with industry knowledge. Yes, so, once you uh, get into that zone where you're doing a business sense of the science writing, then industry interaction is very important to be able to understand what's happening at their end. So attending conferences or events or small seminars, you should be part of each one of such activities to be able to uh, you know, know the people who are there on the industry side to make your visibility also better so that people will reach out to you when they have certain updates to share. So it works both ways. Okay. Yeah. If they know that uh, you are part of this uh, magazine and they also want to promote their own work, they will reach out to you. Absolutely. And since you have been in the industry for some time, have you seen a lot of changes in terms of um, like if you talk about IT, I'm just comparing mm -hmm. with IT because IT is something that keeps changing, right? It's yeah. an ever changing kind of a field. So people have to keep learning a lot. So right, is, right. is it similar here or uh, here uh, writing, if you know well, mm -hmm. then you can cope up whatever comes and you can learn and move on. It's not like an ever evolving kind of an industry. So I think what is ever evolving is the information or the developments that are happening. So in science, of course, there are new technologies coming up, whether it's CRISPR or anything new, which is, you know, a, wanting your attention. So again, that knowledge is something that you need to update yourself. How you have to write it, how you have to convey, you need to take help of these tools, which are easily learnable. And it's a, a matter of time, you'll be able to pick it up. So I think that's the only thing that is required as compared to IT, which can get a little too technical. <laughs> but writing has its own advantages also and more comfortable it is to deal with. So awareness again, to be aware of the latest things is what is the key factor here. Okay. And is there a bit of project management also involved here? Uh, yeah, because again, there is teamwork. So that management aspect is definitely there. And uh, usually at our end, we don't really have bigger projects. Uh, so it's more of a monthly arrangement, a set routine that is there. So I will not call that as a project management at our end. But of course, if there are something new, any new initiative, if we don't want to publish the magazine, if we want to get, create a new video or maybe have a podcast or, you know, those kind of new initiatives can develop into projects, which would require maybe a separate team to do the management there. But on the regular basis, we don't really call it a project management. It's the regular work that we do. So now if we have to help people with uh, drawing their own learning path mm -hmm. so that they can grow in their career. I think in that respect, it's hard work and patience, which are the key ingredients, which are important at every level, whether you are joining mid-level or entry level or at a higher level. Patience and hard work has no other shortcut that uh, needs to go every day in your activity. And as I mentioned earlier, in case you are in the science field or wanting to do science writing, that subject knowledge is something that you need to keep brushing because there's so many things happening. So reading, writing, general awareness, like general knowledge needs to be there. It's an ongoing process. Uh, you can't do without it. And I think it's a matter of luck also, which kind of plays a small role. So it might click for some, might not. But um, I think hard work is the uh, prime thing that will take you places for sure. When you say hard work, is it the hard work is basically whatever task you are given, you have to do it diligently mm -hmm. and um, ensure all the quality standards that have been set by the organization. You meet those, right? And you maintain your timelines. If possible, deliver ahead. Otherwise, at least meet the yes. timelines defined. So that's yeah. what we are defining as hard work. And also uh, you need to do an extra bit in maintaining the networking that you're trying to establish. Even if there is nothing happening at the industry level, you still need to go back to the same industry people, maintain that network because they might forget you. You know, new people would come in, they might want to share information with newer people. But it's your duty to maintain that circle what you have developed of your networking zone and keep working on it. So that maintenance is also part of that hard work, which is very important. Okay. So I understand this is very important networking and this is very relevant for anybody in the industry, mm. for any person in any career. But right. uh, again, it is not something very easy, right? Yes. Sending a connection request over LinkedIn, uh, that's one thing. But how do you make it meaningful? 
uh, any suggestions on that so in particular if you talk about people who are hesitant who are not very vocal in terms of connecting with others if they have a particular forte let's say they're good at writing and not really speaking it out then in terms of establishing newer connection they should be faster in you know sharing their written content so vocal communication is not always required and it's digital all the way these days so just by staying connected by posting or sending the right messages also is one way of you know maintaining that connection or establishing new connection so whatever is your forte something that you need to understand whether it's speaking writing or physically meeting people just focus on that aspect and be able to maintain that end result is what has to be achieved that you maintain your networks or keep building more okay so when when you say maintain network it's basically you just keep in touch with people so that they remember you like you yes. are on top of mind top of top recall value kind of uh, absolutely absolutely let's say for example linkedin is something which is very important these days for networking so i don't have to really talk to 10 people every day all i have to do is probably post a linkedin updated story or an article tag those 10 people so they anyway would then recall okay yeah you know this person is uh, well connected in this aspect so they always remember at the back of their head so you have to show yourself in whichever way possible that's all that is required okay that's a nice example in fact like how you can uh, maintain your network yes yeah okay so that was the definition of hard work <laughs> so <laughs> yes okay. you got that right <laughs> Yeah, I understand if you have to keep in touch and you have to keep writing, connecting, speaking or whatever, it takes your time. That's so. hard work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. So now the next thing is uh, reading and writing. So uh, basically you uh, you have to be aware of the industry. So a lot of uh, reading has to happen as to uh, yes. what's current in the market and so that you can speak relevant things yes. to people. Yes, keep yourself up to date. That will surely okay. create an impression. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So what kind of challenges one might face when they are working in this kind of an industry or this kind of a role? Uh, so I think the challenges would vary in case you're starting at the journalist level or you've reached the editor level. But if I have to share my set of challenges uh, from the start point till the point that I am here, uh, as I mentioned, networking is very important, which can also be challenging at times because it takes time to connect, you know, in the right way with people, because anybody would not be very open to discuss issues which are there at the industry level. So be able to gain their confidence and ensure that uh, to them that you have the right knowledge and the flair to be able to convey their challenges to the end users or to the other stakeholders in general. That whole process takes time and it has its own set of challenges. But once you cross that, then you sink into that zone and things just happen quickly then. So that's the main challenge I would point out. So you also said that uh, there are different challenges at different levels. Could you uh, give us a few examples? Right. So in case you are at a start point, you just a journalist, as I mentioned, uh, initial part is the networking, which is uh, the main challenge. But of course, at the editor level, the uh, levels of challenges increase there. And uh, I think uh, uh, like before we talked about the editorial calendar is one example. Now to be able to uh, build up interesting topics on that calendar, let's say for an entire year, we need to plan. So we need to ensure that these will be the you know uh, main uh, highlights of the year in the coming times, which people would be interested to read. So in order to uh, generate their interest, in order to retain their interest, such topics have to be thought about and charted down. So that entire process can be challenging from the editorials level. So the editor needs to decide on that thing. And once those topics are set, you can't go back and keep changing them. So you need to be on your toes every time you are deciding on any new topic. So that comes with its own set of challenge. And of course, there is competition. So in case the editor is responsible, of course, for the branding. So you need to maintain a level and uh, need to ensure that you are interacting in and out every time you're most aware so that you have the right content placed because there will be competition. Everybody else might also be working on the same content, might be posting better stories, something more interesting. But in order to retain the interest of the stakeholders in your brand, you need to do a little extra in that. So that's challenging. 
<laughs> so also time will become a factor i guess yes yes the sooner the better you deliver <laughs> it will be good for you so uh, you mentioned networking and i understand that somebody who is starting off fresh uh, mm-hmm. for them gaining confidence from uh, unknown people is going to be challenging but do you think somewhere because the magazine name kind of mm-hmm. gives you an opening yes a reason yes. for people to talk to you and yes. uh, yeah then it's on you how you are able to communicate and how you are able to kind of um, speak logical things and <laughs> give correct set of uh, information to be able to gain in, uh, the confidence right Yes, yes. The established brand itself has an advantage for any newbie who's starting. But the last impression is what the person has to make because even though the brand is popular, people might start talking to you. But in order to retain their interest, uh, your impression that needs to be created solely depends on you. But I think one suggestion that I can give here is that any junior should move to such networking places with the seniors. Uh, if the seniors and the juniors have a good equation, that's uh, equally important. So that it will be easier for them to connect. You know, the seniors will have their own set of contacts and they can pass it on to the juniors to some extent. Of course, the uh, next work the juniors have to do on their own. So again, the team effort is something which can work because eventual benefit is of the brand. So the brand should be uh, maintaining its level. So it's, I think, part of the process. These challenges come with the whole process. And when you're working in a team, uh, what kind of uh, team conflicts come into play? Yes, conflicts are very much part of every organization, I'm sure. But if I have to pinpoint, uh, sometimes it does happen that while we are uh, in midst of a discussion, uh, we have our marketing team at one end suggesting a very strong point of as to how to take a particular thing forward. And... On the flip side, our bosses are not in sync with that and they do not want to buy that idea. But eventually the content has to be produced and it's up to the content team to deliver within the timeline. So there are disagreements which can actually go on for a long time. But considering that we have deadlines to meet, we need to reach a conclusion in the best possible way on time. But it's challenging. Okay. And I think very natural to have a little healthy competition between uh, the teammates. And uh, you can't really avoid that. But um, the whole observation should be from the senior level. Like as an editor, when I see the juniors having some sort of competition, I think it should be done in a healthy way so that even if they do compete with each other in delivering a few good pieces back to me, I should be motivating them and not really, you know, uh, demotivating one who hasn't done good work and ensure that the end write-up or the article that comes uh, reaches its place so that the writers are well motivated to do that. But I think competition is good. It should be there, but treated in a healthy way between the team. (laughs) Yeah. So I think everybody has their own, uh, you know, um, say uh, a forte or maybe uh, a weak point or a high point. So for any senior, let's say as an editor, I I should uh, identify that plus or minus point in everybody because not everybody would be of the same kind. But to treat them at the same level becomes a bit difficult because one junior might be able to deliver faster than the other. But the other person might have certain other aspect which is more beneficial. Let's say he's quicker in making calls or uh, searching out particular information. So I think that duty distribution is something that can be done at a senior level for the junior so that, you know, the maximum effort can then be generated from each individual. So that identification is very important. Who is good at what and what not (laughs) so that there is no confusion and no pressure also on the juniors because then they won't be able to deliver. So that understanding is sometimes difficult, but it needs to be established. That should help for sure. And uh, when we not look at the entire set of different age groups that are at play in workplaces mm-hmm. nowadays, how do you interact with uh, these different set of age groups? Do you see any special kind of communication needs to happen with one specific age group versus the other or? So yeah, you rightly said there are different uh, age groups which are there and sometimes it's not necessary that someone who's senior in age will be in senior position 
might be at a junior position. So I think a safe bet is to be respectful to each other, whether junior or senior. Uh, it goes without saying. I've seen is that the new lot that is coming in, the younger generation, they are full of energy. They want to do more than what they actually can achieve. So it's good to keep them motivating, but it sometimes could be a bit risky also because in, you know, being a little more enthusiastic about certain things, they might actually miss out a few points to be written or not to be written in an article so that it comes out in the best neutral way possible. So that training is something which we at a senior level need to ensure that the people get it in the right way. So uh, that way the age sometimes play a little, you know, <laughs> tricky thing. The youngsters are really full of energy, but they are very talented. That's for sure. That's good to know, right? Yes. And um, you are uh, like acting as a bridge between uh, the senior management and the uh, junior level yes. or the yes. middle management that way. So yes. what kind of challenges do you face being here in a sandwich category? Yes, unless the sandwich is delicious, so that everything works well. But yeah, sometimes it can get tricky because the senior management might have a set agenda to follow and they will not by any way adjust to what we are trying to say. But I think the message needs to be conveyed that the work needs to be done. So I need to tackle it at my end so that I need to extract everything possible from the junior level and take it back to the senior level. But uh, yeah, it could be difficult at times. And final say, of course, the management would take the final call. Uh, but um, a bit of here and there, you know, certain adjustments need to be done. But that, that's part of, I think, every organization has to <laughs> face that problem. <laughs> but yeah, as long as everybody's on the same page at the end of uh, whatever the issue is, uh, I think it's it's a learning experience also in a way. So it works. <laughs> So you kind of uh, try to communicate what senior management has to say to the junior management and there is a lot of absorbing uh, that has to happen at your level, I believe. Yes, from right. both ends and then strike a balance and take the right decision so that uh, we don't have much to lose. <laughs> Sometimes there are deadlines which need to be matched and uh, things can go a little disturbing, but yeah. That absorbance, as you rightly said, uh, needs to be tight and strong. What kind of uh, write-ups, according to you, can be called good? What are those uh, few things that you look for in articles to call it a good one? So honestly speaking, from the journey that I've been from the science writing at the research level now to the business sort of science writing, my seniors have already always told me that you need to write something in a story format. You know, there has to be an objective of why you are writing something and what are you trying to convey. So that storytelling format is the easiest way to write, is what I have understood. But of course, the key thing is to have all the updated information in it. In case you miss out on something, it will be like a half-baked thing. So we should avoid that. So keep reading the same thing, whatever you have written again and again, to make sure that the story makes sense and you haven't missed out on any point. That would be a perfect article. For sure. Okay. Let's just take a little detour and okay. uh, step into your childhood days. <laughs> during your school days or during your college days, what kind of aspirations you had uh, in terms of career? What did you want to become? So I think very early I decided I want to be a doctor. Uh -huh. And I had started studying in that uh, sense only and you know how it is you finish your 10 boards and then you move on to 11th and 12th you need to take the specific subjects so mine was very clear I have to take up medical I want to become a doctor but after I finished my school and I was seeking medical uh, admissions I realized that it's really tough out there and there are actually more options in terms of studying science and that's when I stumbled upon biotechnology which was pretty new at that time and uh, since I could not get the desired seat I wanted for the medical course, I switched gears and I moved to biotechnology. But that uh, doctor thing was still in my head somewhere. So while doing my bachelor's and master's in biotechnology, I realized that there is another opportunity that I can carry on with to get the doctor tag associated with my name. And that's when I started doing my PhD. Ki, this is something that I should complete now. And that has been that school dream of Becoming a doctor eventually got, uh, <laughs> you know, okay. satisfied. Yes, absolutely. So that was my journey. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Manbina, you did your doctorate. 
then why did you decide to come into journalism right that's a very valid question so yes i completed my phd and usually the course of action is once you're done with your phd in fields like science microbiology and biotechnology you turn out and take the next step and do your post doctoral and then become a scientist eventually but i thought the other way because i have always been more interested in communication so i wanted to get into some workplace where i could now start writing or translating that information what is generated in a laboratory not known to many so right after i finished my phd i started applying for jobs into uh, communication and science communication based magazine biospectrum is one that i approached to start with and i got the job and that's where i started and i realized that it it's quite a forte of mine to write and uh, develop content and articles based on the scientific understanding that i have and now that i understand it better what's happening at the industry so it's quite a shift from the academic to the industry and to be able to translate that information and share it with others so i enjoyed that process <laughs> okay okay and were there any other interests that you still carry with you um like since beginning i have been a more uh, creative person so a little artistic so i think that particular uh, uh, interest of mine got uh, carried forward in this particular job that i am doing because there is always scope of you know making the articles more creative or a little artistic angle to it to make it more interesting so that is a passion that i enjoy with my work so i've been lucky in that way and uh, you had like when i reached out to you before uh, we got into this conversation you had mentioned you were a part of drama Can you tell us more about it are you continuing with that as well yes that was my artistic interest which started uh, right from schools at school time also i was interested in doing theaters and drama which took a sort of a setback while uh, looking at the career opportunities so i did not pursue that much but uh, right after i was finishing my phd i got back into it and yes uh, for the past 5 6 years i have been very active in that uh, theater space uh, especially in bangalore but i think because of covid things changed a bit so again it's become a little low profile these days but uh, yeah you never know i would get back with it and share the invite for my next theater play very soon <laughs> okay that's really good so does it help you balance uh, the stress uh, in your office or i wouldn't say necessarily stress but generally when you are doing or thinking work only Uh, these kind of uh, activities does it help you it does it does it's a personal choice again but honestly it's very time consuming also because theater people consider it as a hobby but it's actually a full time work so somebody who's totally absorbed in it cannot actually get back to work so i have to strike that balance so that i don't get absorbed in the other direction but yes it is a stress buster and i totally enjoy it. anything creative and for me theater and drama acting is something that helps me a lot i think being involved in drama or plays mm-hmm. uh, somewhere it has some contribution into your creative aspects in your work also right how Absolutely. you communicate stories and how you are able to connect with people because i believe uh, that helps you a lot connecting with people easily Yes it does and again as i said that it helps me write better also because i have the knack of storytelling or listening to stories so i'm able to make more sense of you know how to write what to write what would actually be interesting in order to convey as a information so that actually helps personally i enjoy that process more okay so now if i ask you about your journey in terms of your growth uh, mm-hmm. what do you think helped you grow uh was it a fast growth or was it like a regular paced growth in terms of the career yes, path yeah. that i am in uh i think it had its own time but i think fortunately my background uh, in terms of education helped me uh understand the writing process more in terms of what needs to be delivered uh, with respect to the industry needs what we are dealing with uh so that was an advantage which uh, might not have been there if i had not done a phd or you know uh, delved too much into the subject so that was an advantage and i could achieve i think faster comparatively which i'm glad okay 
So subject matter knowledge, a good hold on the subject matter kind of helped you move forward. Yes. Yes. But uh, I'm sure there were other aspects also, right? Some softer aspects that helped you move up faster. I think it's uh, more about the experience, uh, what the person goes through. Because as I said, there are a lot of challenges which also come in whatever career path you are in. So teamwork is something that needs to be balanced because if you become the editor, eventually you need to take care of so many small, small issues that arise. So again, uh, talking about my artistic side, we've always used to working in a team environment, whether it's theater or anywhere else. So that also kind of helped me mingle with the you know people you're working with and uh, not really... Uh, making much differences in terms of the discussions or the final conclusions that need to be done. So that's another thing that helped me or I learned better how to mingle with all the team members in the best possible ways. So yeah. Is there a gender bias? For there is a lot of gender disparity which exists and of course the male domination has mostly been there but it's a good thing that things are changing. And uh, the industry is now more exposed to you know such observations and they're openly talking about it. Whether it's like a pharmaceutical company or a smaller organization who's into science writing and all, uh, things are changing. The ratio is uh, getting to on the other side. But for an individual, as a woman, it's it's challenging because you need to take a career decision at a point where one has to get married also. So it's the personal and the professional conflict always uh, right in front of every woman. And it all depends on the individual. Everything is important. But everything needs to be balanced, whether it's your job, which requires more attention at a particular time, please give it to that. And don't do something that you don't want to do just because the society norms are saying so. That's just my personal observation. Because for every woman, this balancing is equally important now. Maybe earlier uh, things were a bit different. But uh, now uh, women need to kind of, you know, express themselves, have open discussions, especially with men, and to get their support. And that's the only way the society can balance itself. But things are changing. That's something that is good to know. And I'm sure it will be further improving in years to come. So I'm looking forward to that, especially for a country like India. It, it's remarkable. Things have changed a lot. Good times ahead for women. Yeah, actually, there are many women. Um, you can see them in senior positions, right? Yes. Earlier, it wasn't the case. So now that you wasn't. see many women in senior positions and hoping many more would happen absolutely. in the future yeah absolutely <laughs> okay and um any final piece of advice manvina before we wind up for the day today well my final piece of advice to first of all all the women out there would be that um, listen to yourself follow your passion do what is uh, best which you think is good for you and then everything else will fall into place so just go with the flow and uh, be the leader of your own life because that's the way it is and of course it's applicable to men as well there and all the younger people who are you know full of enthusiasm these days there are a lot of opportunities out there for you especially in your career path but uh, again as I said earlier there is no shortcut to hard work so that needs to go uh, hand in hand with whatever career path you choose and uh, focus on your goals and um, I think that should be the way forward to life. And don't forget to keep smiling. That's equally important. So, uh, yes, uh, that's actually the final piece of advice from my end. Keep smiling and keep working hard. Thank you so much, Manvina. Thank you for Thank this you. lovely conversation. And uh, hopefully this will help many people. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. As we wrap up today's episode, I sincerely hope that you have found this conversation interesting and informative. Your thoughts and comments are invaluable to us. If you have questions or seek more insights, please don't hesitate to drop us a message. Your engagement fuels our growth and content direction. Thank you for being an essential part of our community. If you have enjoyed our episode today, don't forget to hit the like button and do share it with friends, colleagues, or anyone you believe could benefit from our conversation. Moreover, consider subscribing to our channel to receive notifications of upcoming episodes as soon as they are released. Thank you once again for tuning in. Wish you a wonderful day ahead.